Hello and welcome to the Bible Connection Podcast, the show that provides commentary and encouragement as you work through your Bible reading plan. I'm John Steinke, and today we're talking about the book of Philemon. And as usual, we have guests on the podcast that have taken the time to study and answer our questions. This week we have Joshua Williams. Hey, how's it going? Taylor Babcock. Good to be here. And Brandon Stukesbury. Hello. Um, Josh, you're leading this one. Are you ready to get started? Oh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm jumping out of my seat. Okay. Well, as we open up the letter... We're going to need you to stay in your seat for this. Yeah. <laughs> it would be a little bit more helpful. Your mic is kind of tied to the table. Um, as we open up the letter, we see it was written to a man named Philemon, but it's about a man named Onesimus. So who were Philemon and Onesimus, and what was their relationship with each other, and what was their relationship to Paul? If you could just break down those three guys for us. Yeah, no problem. So Philemon, it says in um, in verse 2, to Philemon, Paul, he's, he's, he's writing this. Um, he says he's a prisoner for Christ, so we're assuming... Uh, one of his um, times in prison, he's writing this letter to Philemon. Um, and Philemon, it says, uh, our beloved fellow worker, um, and Aphaia, our sister, Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. So, you know, this, this letter is being addressed to Philemon, um, but also the church in his house. Um, that's important uh, to pay attention to. But uh, Phile- Philemon, he's a, he's a fellow brother. Um Paul goes on to say, and starting in verse 4, he's, he's talking about how he, he thanks God always when I remember you in my prayers. He says, because I hear of your love and your faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints, I pray that the uh, sharing of your faith may become more, um, may, may become effective for the knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brothers, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. So Philemon, he's a... Um, most likely an elder in in this in this in this church. Um, he he he's someone that that Paul respects. Um, he's someone that uh, Paul knows uh, closely, um, and he, he's writing this letter. And it's about Onesimus. Um, Onesimus he's uh, he's he's a bond servant, a slave of Philemon. Um, and the reason why this whole letter is about Onesimus is, as you guys will read along, um, Onesimus he runs away from Philemon, right? Um, you know. We can assume, you know, on- Onesimus is most likely not converted. Um, so, you know, he's probably, you know, for some reason or another, he just doesn't want to be a part of this. Um, so he runs away. Um, and, you know, Onesimus, he, he somehow, he finds Paul, right? And you ask me, what, what's their relationship with each other? You know, their master, bond servant, slave master. And what's their relationship to Paul? Well, Onesimus runs into Paul, right? Um Paul's, Paul's in prison, um, and Paul converts Onesimus, right? And during that time, Onesimus is serving Paul, helping him um, while in prison. Um, and, and we'll get later on um, in these questions, but basically that's, that's the layout. Um, Paul's in prison. Philemon is, you know, maybe somewhere near Colossae. We don't really know um, too much about when this was written, you know, kind of where they're located, but... Um, and then Onesimus, he, uh, that's, that's their, that's their relationship. Okay. So Paul, he converted Philemon when he went to his city to share the gospel. Mm. And then at some point his slave, Onesimus ran away from him to Paul Mm -hmm. where the slave is converted. And now Paul is writing a letter to Philemon. Correct. Yep. That's, that's the setup. Well, in verse eight, Paul says he's bold enough to command Philemon of something, but he would rather make an appeal out of love. Um, why is he doing this? Why doesn't he just use his authority over Philemon if he if he has something he wants from him? Well, let's just uh, let's hop into verse eight. So it says, "Accordingly, the, accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you." He's he's appealing to uh, he's appealing to Philemon. He's appealing to oh, the, like I said that in in verse two uh, it says to Philemon our our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. We're assuming that this letter would have been read more publicly. Okay. Right? Um, like tonight? Like tonight. Like tonight. Um, so, you know, Paul is, is writing this for a reason. He, he's he's, he's going to get to a broader point of why he's sending Onesimus back to, to Philemon. He, he's trying to show them what it means to... Um, change your perspective on how we view people that are converted, right? How we view people that, you know, uh, no matter what they did in their past, right, that, you know, Christ's forgiveness is, is what we should model, 
um, in our lives. So he says, um, accordingly, though I'm bold enough in Christ to command you uh, to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you. Um, I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. So Paul, Paul, he has this relationship with Onesimus that's a little bit different than how he left Philemon, right? Um, you know, you know, of course, we talked about Paul converting Onesimus. Um, now Paul, I mean, now, now Onesimus is, is serving Paul in prison. Um, so, you know, um, Paul is wanting to send Onesimus back um, because he knows there's some unsettled, it, it, it's unsettled, right? Um, Onesimus ran away from Philemon. That would have been like a, a capital offense. Like you could have been punished severely for, you know, being a runaway slave or, you know, you know, sometimes they would even brand them on their forehead. Like this, this guy's a fugitive. I've seen the gladiator. Yeah. So like it's, it's a really serious offense. Right. And there, there has to be some kind of, um, uh, conclusion, um, or there has to be some kind of, um, um, not recompense. What am I trying to say here? Something, something needs to be reconciled here. Reconciliation. Because yes. This, because yeah. Onesimus has this hanging over his head. You know, he's got this right. punishment lurking. And Philemon has been wronged, mm-hmm. and so something needs to happen here in, in this community of, of believers. I, I, I want to extrapolate from the text a little bit here, but I, the the language that's used that Paul uses about <clears throat> verse ten, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. You know the language that Paul is using here for the, the discipleship relations, right? Nowadays, in, in, in our day, we're very familiar with these ministries that that have these big six flags over Jesus, you know, and get, get hundreds and hundreds of Billy Graham-style crusades, you know, and get all of these people who make decisions for Christ, but yet afterwards, the connection, the connection to the local church is almost is almost completely there there's almost no connection at all but we see here Paul's idea of discipleship is is familial he sees it he sees it like a, a familial relation a relationship so I, I find it, it, it it's it's just interesting to me that Paul uses this type of language we don't often use this this type of language anymore but um, you definitely see the richness that comes across in it yeah, I think one thing that's really cool that I was I just saw in an article as I was reading, um, he says in verse eleven, formerly like before, Onesimus was useless to you, but now he's useful, and it's kind of a play on words he's doing because mm-hmm. Onesimus's name means useful. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he's only now truly being Onesimus now that he's in Christ and has seen the truth, mm-hmm. which I thought was a really cool nugget. Not that that's the whole theme. Well, names, names, uh, especially in the Old Testament, names of people, names of cities, a lot of times are extremely important. Yeah. Well, um, moving forward, um, he's appealing for an Esmus, like you said, right? Which it's kind of not stated directly, but it seems like his appeal is take this slave back and treat him nicely. Don't initiate the capital offense. So in verse 16, he says, Take Onesimus back no longer as a bondservant, but as a beloved brother. Is Paul commanding that Christians free their slaves in this verse? No, I don't think so. But let's um, first let's break down bondservant, slave, right? You asked me, is, is Paul commanding for Christians to get rid of their slaves? We have to take this idea of, you know, this this word slavery. This what what comes to your mind when you think about that? Uh, like immediately the off movie the movie Django, Django, or yeah. You guys seen that movie, 12 Years a Slave? Yeah, thinking right? of African slave trade, thinking mm-hmm. of, you know, Plantation South. Yeah, and that's something that's, you know, in in today's day and age, like, you know, we're still seeing people, um, you know, they say, like, there's um, there's ripple effects to what happened um, in our, our U.S. history. Um, but, you know, our idea that comes to mind that, you know, we've learned about growing up is, you know, s- slaves, it was a racial thing. Right, it was people being taken from you know where they lived and bought and sold. Right. Yeah, Brandon referenced something called man stealing. Like, what, what's that? So, yeah. So in the Old Testament, you see in the in the in the Torah there there are there are harsh 
um, sanctions against what's called man stealing. So, and we have an example of this is, is Joseph. Mm-hmm. Or, well, I mean, in, we, we, we see that, that um, um, well, not so much Joseph, but there, there would be people who would, who would kidnap people and sell them on the open market. Um, and that, that is man stealing. And, and the, the consequence of that is, is the maximum yeah. consequence of that is death. The so. Amalekites were notorious for that. Yeah. And well, yeah, go ahead. So like, Josh, that's not, that's not what that's we're not doing. What's yeah. We here. shouldn't have the presupposition yeah. of that kind of slavery. Um, when we read into this. Correct. Correct. Yeah, because so, it, because it could be bond servitude slavery in this sense. And, 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 and many, in many cases was very gracious because remember, there was no, there was no, um, there was no welfare system. It was mo- it was mostly an agrarian cultures. If your crops failed, you either starved to death or you put yourself into, you 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 um, basically went to people who had means and put yourself in servitude of those people so that you could be provided for. Mm-hmm. So it was actually. It was actually a gracious system, and there are provisions in the law for that very thing. Um, it, it, it was it was a gracious system. So, but not to say that there weren't abuses of that. Mm. In, even even in even in uh, the Torah, because we see that um, even in the Torah, there are, there are, you know if you you can't do certain things, if you do this, there's consequence of this, and we see examples of that later in the prophets. Um, but yeah, this is like Brandon was saying. It's it's an economic thing, right? It's a little bit different. It's well, it's a lot bit different than, you know, being racially picking and choosing of who you're going to be a slave. Um, but also, you know, you said verse sixteen. If you look, you know, a little bit ahead uh, or before, um, you know, Paul's talking to Philemon. Says, "But I preferred to do nothing without your consent, in order that your goodness might not be out of compulsion, but out of your own accord." Um, and, you know, he's talking about, um, you know, as he's sending Onesimus back, you know, you know, um, take him back, right? For this, perhaps, is why he has parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, right? Why does he say forever? Um, it's because he's now a fellow brother, like it says in verse 16. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe this is what was meant to happen, so that way, you know, he would f- seek me out, he would be converted, and now we have another brother, added to our fold. You know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. So this is like a beautiful picture of redemption, this reconciliation like you talked about. Um, anyways, yeah. Yeah, and, and, the, and the fact that you could have slaves and masters at the same communion table. Mm. Like that's, a, that's an amazing thing. I mean, the, the, ch- the church is breaking down socioeconomic boundaries that, that were unheard of. So, Well, in verse 21, Paul says that he's confident Philemon will obey and that he would do even more than he was asked. Is it right for us to have these kinds of expectations for other believers? I I think it's good for us to have these expectations of other believers. Um, just like, you know, us sitting out here at this table, right? I am, you know, more encouraged by the um, the commitment, by the time it takes to, let's say, study for this podcast, right? It's, it's a commitment out of our lives. We got to come here, record it. We got to come here and uh, be well prepared, studied, um, you know, or, or just, you know, fellow brothers and sisters in the church, right? I think, you know, Philemon, the book of Philemon is, is a representation. It's a picture of how close knit fellow believers are supposed to be in the church, right? We're supposed to, like, for instance, you know, Paul is saying, you know, I am confident of your obedience. Right, confident. So it's not it's not a sense of like, oh, maybe he will, maybe he won't. You know, it's a sense of I know Philemon. I've seen his works. You know, he's his works, his his actions. They encourage me. You know, he's derived much joy and comfort from his love. Um, this is this is just a beautiful picture of redemption. Um, in 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 the relationships between uh, fellow believers. Um, but yeah. Um. Another cool little tidbit in the ending of in the ending of Philemon, it says, uh, um, "Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and and so do Mark, uh, our our Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers." Um, what's really cool about there that that little uh, tidbit is Mark 
kind of had a, a similar story to Onesimus, right? We read in Acts um, 12 and 13 uh, where it talks about Mark um, kind of getting cold feet for his missionary journey, right? And Paul and Barnabas are encouraging him, like, no, you, this is this is the route you need to be taking, right? And, you know. And he goes back home. He goes back home, yeah. Um, like, Mark and Onesimus have a very similar story. Maybe not one, you know, Mark wasn't a slave, but he would, he would have been a, you know, uh, he would have grown up in a Christian household, but, you know, he got, he got cold feet. Um, so just like Onesimus deserted Philemon, Mark deserted Paul. Yes, yeah. And by referencing Mark, he's modeling for Philemon those high expectations yeah, of love. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, and that's just another encouraging thing about, you know, um, Mark's there, you know, serving Paul as he's in prison. Um, you know, it's just, this book is great, um, you know, to think, I mean, it's a small book. Yeah, but read it, please. Don't just listen to this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take, it takes less time to read it than it does <laughs> yeah. to listen to this episode. Yeah. A few verses back in uh, 17, I love that picture of, like, of a brother in the community there. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. Mm-hmm. If he has wronged you at all or owes you anything, charge that to my account. Put it on my tab. Yeah, I, I feel like, like as Christians, like we should, like use that as a model, like as mm-hmm. as our brother and sister next to us, um, not as we tend to do so often in Western society, hold on to our own assets and money, but be be willing to pick up your brother's tab to to whatever is owed to them, or being charged to them to. To help them out uh, as as a brother would, so I, I love that picture that is is drawn here. Yeah, and it makes me think about uh, Jesus's parable of the Good Samaritan because after after it says the Samaritan has has in uh, Luke Luke ten thirty five it says the next day he took two denarii and gave to the innkeeper saying take care of him and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. So we see here Paul. Paul is modeling his the the one who came before him. He's modeling his, his life after Jesus, right? and he is he's showing he's showing Philemon um, what what discipleship looks like, and hopefully Philemon will model this, you know, on to the disciples that come from him. I think it's important too because way too often we look at um, feuds in, among Christians among believers. And our advice is very quickly just, well, you two need to avoid each other, right? And how often do people go to a different church because of a small argument or disagreement that blew up into something that was never resolved? And Paul's modeling here, like, we need to strive to bring reconciliation between people whom it seems like the circumstances make it impossible mm-hmm. or the history makes it too painful. And we're supposed to do so at when it's not easy. You know, even if we have to say, you know, put it to my account. Act like I'm the one who wronged you. I will be the one who makes it right. Um, And then, of course, Paul mentioning in verse 19, uh, you know, don't even mention how you owe me everything. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But but if he owes you anything, put it on my tab. And um, I just think that we should remember um, how difficult that is and be encouraged by it when we strive to um, bring reconciliation between members of the church. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's episode of the Bible Connection Podcast. Thank you so much for everyone who took the time to listen this week. We hope the podcast equips you and encourages you as you read, and we're all excited to study and read the book of Hebrews. In the meantime, leave a comment on YouTube if you have any questions, and we all hope you have a blessed day.